one general question for any one of the three of you. Um, it, it, I write about science primarily, and I write about clinical development programs, and maybe I don't have a full understanding or appreciation of the massive sort of funding, regulatory infrastructure behind it, whatever. Um, when I think about science, I think of somebody at a bench, I think of somebody trying to develop something, moving to patients. When you read about PPPs, you see roadmaps, frameworks, partnerships, a lot of abstract management type language. And I'm very curious to know whether there's any tension between the sort of um, the creativity you might hope is at work at a scientific bench and the sort of the the dead hand of bureaucracy, if I can call it that, <laughs> which sounds very uh, pejorative, but um, I'm just wondering, is there a tension between those two worlds? Of course. Yeah, okay. And, and that's, that's why... Uh, can I get the mic? Is, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, of course there's tension, and um, yeah. that's why it's uh, necessary to build these things as um, like people working together. Mm -hmm. um, because, of course, there's a big gap between the culture of academia and the culture of business, the mm -hmm. culture of regulatory science, the culture of HTA, the culture of uh, the payer, yeah. um, and so on and so forth. So uh, the idea behind a lot of these uh, PPPs is to actually get these people to understand each other mm -hmm. in, in, in being able to work together yeah. and accelerating the flow of mm -hmm. information from one end to another. Mm -hmm. We call this, you know, end-to-end -end integration. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what we need for, uh, for some of these things. So there is, there is tension, but it's productive tension. Okay. Or so you say. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, uh, sure. I see that more as an opportunity. That, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, each has his own specificity, his own constraints somehow. Mm -hmm. and, and the, mm -hmm. the question is how can you find a fit between constraint on each side yeah but then uh, one way to do it is that uh, on each side we integrate the, the constraint that will have an impact and integrate that from the beginning in the academic when you you are in the innovation pass and for, for vaccine and that's what we're talking about you mm -hmm. integrate uh, what would be the constraint at the end if, if we take an example of production mm -hmm. and you, you need to have an idea that that will be scaled up and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and, and the same way in academic, you have to integrate the science that has been built to reach that point to use it, as you say, for the regulatory interaction and mm -hmm. make it as a science base for your registration. So it's, it's more an opportunity than a... Yeah, 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 yeah. And I suppose it's, it's as well, academic science is, is, is one thing, but when you're taking a piece of science and hopefully taking it all the way to the marketplace, that's a very long, complicated journey. It takes a long time. And even longer in the case of vaccines than in the case of, of therapeutics. Um, I guess that's a huge part of that. And that's why you've got this, these supports that take it along different parts of the journey or what people might say, the value chain. <laughs> yeah. I may say something. So, well, um, this whole process, it takes easily 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. So we must find ways to uh, shorten these delays, especially in the case of emergencies. Yeah. Ebola showed that, that if there is goodwill, common sense, it's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, on the long run, um, we have to, yes, to what has been said, huh? we have to uh, uh, try to uh, have a sustainable uh, approach of dialogue uh, so that every party from mm. the bench to the end mm. understands what mm. uh, he's doing and what the needs of the other party are in order to anticipate the gaps and to fill yeah. them yeah. in a yeah. timely manner. Okay, great. Uh, actually, uh, if we, we talked about the Malaya vaccine yeah. from inception to the licensure, yes. that was 30 years. How many years? 30 years. 30. And it still wow. continues, I mean, the, and yeah. that's an ongoing process. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a new concept in vaccine that didn't used to exist. Uh, therapeutic uh, small molecule, they're used to the concept of attrition rate. Mm -hmm. You start from a lot and you, you have a few. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, a vaccine reaching phase three, it was mm -hmm. almost a given that that vaccine will be efficacious. Right. There are quite a few vaccines now that reach phase three and do not go to licensure. Ah, and okay. that's why in the vaccine field, uh, de-risking de becomes mm -hmm. really important because yes. we are talking about a cost. Uh, you move from phase one to phase two to phase three, you increase almost by one log the cost mm -hmm. each time. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. clearly you want to bring to the last stage the one that uh, are the most likely to succeed. Okay, so phase three attrition and vaccines is an issue. I hadn't... It's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs>